It's safe to say that Southwest Airlines offers many amazing benefits to travelers. I needed two checked bags on this itinerary, and Southwest gave me just that opportunity. Join me as we fly from Indianapolis to Tulsa via Dallas Love Field on Southwest Airlines with their Boeing 737-700s. This is going to be a great time, and I hope all of you are excited for this. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started, everybody. Alrighty, everybody, welcome to the Southwest flights from Indianapolis to Tulsa. We know the drill in Southwest. I've covered them many times here on this channel, but we'll put a unique twist on it to give some variety. So again, I hope all of you are excited for this and welcome to Indianapolis International Airport. So today we're gonna to be taking two of their Boeing 737-700s as I come home from my Pacific Northwest excursion. What an awesome time this trip was. I'll talk about it more later in the video, but for now, let's kind of talk about why I chose to finish up with Southwest here for this trip. So as I kind of hinted at, I needed two checked bags because I was taking another one home that I wasn't expecting to earlier when I was planning the trip. And Southwest had a really good price. I think it was like, I don't know, it was a Tuesday evening. I think it may have been somewhere in the ballpark of $125 one way, which for the summer was really great. And I definitely couldn't pass up that opportunity, whatever the price was. So it was really great. And that alone really made it worth the two checked bags that I needed. So that really played into my decision to choose Southwest for this itinerary. So anyway, like I said though, welcome to Indianapolis International Airport here. I've done a video on this airport. It is tremendous. It is is wonderful especially the really cool southwest 737 they have hanging from the ceiling overall the infrastructure is tremendous and it's a great airport to fly in and out of one of the best mid-sized offerings in the united states hands down with that said though we're going to go ahead and get started here with our first boeing 737-700 the registration of this aircraft today is november 7720 foxtrot which is the 18 year old example of the type and a fun fact this aircraft actually flew for airtran for a while so that's pretty cool but anyway let's go ahead and get on board i had some pretty good boarding positions so let's go ahead and get seated and get ready for for today's flight. So today I'm gonna to be sitting in seat Excuse me, this will be seat 22F, which will prove quite powerful on November, uh, no, yeah, November 7720 Foxtrot. So this is gonna be a great time. We're departing here about 3.45 in the afternoon. So again, this will prove quite powerful and will 100% be a great time. With all that being said, let's go ahead and push back everybody. Feel free to stay on the lookout for all the in-flight videos as those will be coming up very soon. And we have some cool sights and sounds to kind of take a look at here. So I'll show you all that. And then we'll go over for our takeoff today out of Indianapolis International Airport. So I hope all of you enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get into the details, everybody. everybody so i hope you enjoyed that takeoff and here we go to our cruising altitude so we're going to be heading towards the southwest so obviously it made sense to sit on the right side well it, or, or, uh, sorry the a side wrong seat 23a is where i sat on this flight i read off the wrong one so 23a made sense because that's the side where the sun's at your back and here's a tip for all of you that may be curious if you want nice lighting on your pictures from the window i highly recommend sitting on the side behind you you can use uh your brain if you can figure it out that way so for example obviously the sun's going to be in this case on the kind of the west northwest side of the plane so it makes sense to sit on the left side that has the sun behind it but if it's a little too challenging for you to process you can also use suncalc.net and kind of meant I uh, visualize it a little bit too so if any of you would like more information on that feel free to let me know maybe even I can make a video on it but it certainly makes or breaks the pictures as you can kind of see throughout here anyway though 23a for today's flight as you all know I love the old interior on Southwest Airlines and their Boeing 737 700s I personally think it's one of the best out there really fair leg room but the lower back padding uh, particularly is absolutely wonderful so this was quite an awesome vibe and overall I really enjoyed it but let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of detail here on November 7720 Foxtrot so this is an 18 year old Boeing 737-700. As I hinted at earlier, this aircraft started with Air Train Airways and it flew for them till they merged in 2014 and Southwest Airlines has been operating it ever since. 
One little tip just for fun. If you're trying to identify whether a Southwest plane flies for flew for Southwest to begin or flies for another carrier, typically the Southwest aircraft that are 700s have two letter prefixes at the end of the registrations. And then for the 737-800s, stay on the lookout for a Z at the end of the registration. That's a pretty common one. And then there's some others like F. I know F is used here on this particular aircraft, but it's 737-700. So when it has four numbers, that typically is a indication that it was an original Southwest aircraft. They're kind of goofy, but typically that's how it rolls. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, nice afternoon flight here on the 737-700. So another really great example of the type, and they did a really good job maintaining it. So that's quite awesome. Not too many major notes from this flight to really go over. I lost my sticky note where I had all the notes. There it is. So going into this flight, there wasn't too much crazy. Going in a little bit of detail on the Indianapolis to Dallas Love Field segment. So you can catch this one once to twice a day, depending on the season and it can be anywhere from $80 to $200, which is quite awesome. It's also worth knowing, noting that there are more ways to get between the city pair. American and Frontier both fly from Dallas-Fort Worth Airport to Indianapolis Airport, so you can catch American up to six times a day, and then Frontier operates a handful of times a week. That's assuming they didn't cut the route. I don't think they have, but anyway, I know that that was one of the neat ones that they added with their large establishment they have developed there, so that's pretty cool. So anyway, though, this flight was really great. As you can see, there's some wonderful views and all of what you would desire out there. So yeah, really, you know, it's not the craziest scenery ever, but it is nice to look at. And I think that it definitely turned out well here on this flight. Again, sitting on the side where the sun's behind our back. So we're able to get some really good views. So I'll go ahead and let you look at the rest of those as we go throughout. But really, I don't have too much more for this particular segment besides that it was solid. And overall, I really enjoyed it. So with that being said, I'll show you any final views before we go ahead and land here in the Dallas Field Airport, which will be absolutely wonderful. So we'll go ahead and land. I'll talk a little bit about the layover and then we'll get into our second flight. With that being said, I hope all of you enjoy the views and the landing here at Dallas Love Field. Okay, everyone, welcome to Dallas Love Field Airport. So we have a little uh, layover going here. Actually, a pretty solid one, believe it or not. We'll be here from about 4.45 to 7.45, so three hours to just absolutely get after it. So let's go ahead and get into details. So first and foremost, not surprising, it was 109 degree real fill here at the Dallas Love Field Airport. So not surprised at all. Just thought it was kind of interesting to note as always. Well, not interesting, but you know, worth noting considering circumstances so that's where we have that to take a look at i also made a plane spotting video here as well so feel free to check that out if you get an opportunity to as it was a really fun spotting session so that was cool too had some dinner as well dallas Love field has a good variety of great vendors so no matter what kind of food you're looking for they have you covered and some fairly reasonable prices as well but as i was saying i've made a video or sorry i made a video on ind but i also made a video on dallas Love field airport several months ago it's a really awesome one i highly recommend checking it out it's one of the nicest mid or yeah mid-sized airports whatever you want to call it but obviously the secondary city operation there is dallas fort worth the main airport but it's super cool to see what southwest has done here with their operation and it's certainly been a productive one flying all around the country and they certainly have expanded their offerings here especially over the last 10 years since obviously some of the regulations on southwest pulled up so that's really cool and overall it's been fun to see what southwest has been able to make out of dallas love field but anyway check out that spotting video if you're interested dallas love field's an awesome airport and the infrastructure video too and as, like I said, it's really cool and I'd recommend checking it out. With that being said, we're on to our second flight of the day and this is gonna be on November 216, Whiskey November here out of gate number three on the Southwest 737-700. This aircraft's also 18 years old and it was originally delivered to Southwest, so the prefixes go strong there for the theory. So anyway, this is gonna be a nice quick flight up the Tulsa. We have 100% load factor. We'll be seating in seat 22F, so very excited about all this. So let's go ahead and push back and get to it. And if there's any additional clips, once again, I'll show those off. But anyway, looking strong here, we'll go ahead and take off with our service over to Tulsa International Airport. So I have some more to talk about during that cruise. So let's go ahead and take off so we can get to that discussion. I hope all of you enjoy.
everybody. Welcome to the cruising session here. So yet again, another really cool route. I've talked about it a couple times, but I'll briefly touch on it again. So this flight is flown three or four times a day, depending on the season. And you can find tickets anywhere from $39 to $199. So you can definitely get some really good deals. And this has induced many Southwest Airlines day trips I've done. So in the future, you can expect some summary videos on those day trips. And I'll kind of explain in those videos how to get those really good deals and the philosophies I took to make it a reality because it was really fun. So yeah, really awesome segment here and it definitely proved powerful and it is really good for connections as well as you saw in this particular case and I've connected through Dallas Subfield many times and I've enjoyed it every single time. So it's been quite wonderful to say the least. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the elephant in the room. This is, the, this is it for the Pacific Northwest excursion. And man, it was so much fun to make videos on. Obviously we started all the way back in June and I'm pre-recording this. So I'm not sure if we're late September, early October when this is getting made here in 2024. Regardless of when this is coming out though, I do wanna say thank you all so much for the support on all these videos. I had a delightful time making them all and I'm so glad that many of them were well received. There was so many cool videos that we were able to make here. And again, it's such a unique sector of aviation and I can't recommend it enough. If you ever get the opportunity to check out any of the aviation up there, whether it's Seattle, Vancouver, or even you know the really cool prop aircraft that fly, there's so much to do and it's truly quite a vibe. And once again, there's so much going on up there. So I'll talk about it more in the summary video for this trip, but I. I had a delightful time making all these videos and exploring and checking out so many unique places of aviation because it really is kind of hidden. You have to kind of go dig for it. And, you know, from Flight City in Vancouver to Cranbrook Airport and, you know, all the other various pieces of the puzzle, it was quite a fun vibe. So, and it's always nice to start and end with, you know, so, some simple flights and Southwest was certainly the case here, but there was some other wonderful ones as well, like the Alaska first class flight and obviously some fun ones on United as well. So absolutely loved it. And it was certainly quite a wonderful time, but I definitely think it's worth celebrating how awesome it was to get to share all this content with you all. As you know, my number one goal here on my channel is to provide inspiration, thought, knowledge, and education to you, the viewer, and entertainment as well. With that being said, I always want to give my viewers the best opportunity to find unique places in aviation that may not be exposed to everyone. And I feel like this video series really encapsulated how unique aviation can get, even in North America. And I'm feeling very fortunate and super grateful to say that we'll have a bunch of awesome content coming from the continent of Europe. And that will be yet another awesome opportunity to expose us some, to some very unique aviation as well but we also have some other fun pieces in between nor more united states aviation that is super cool to dive into some more unique aircraft types and products so i'm excited to dive into that along with hawaii as well i was very fortunate to get to go there twice so far so man it's it's quite a wonderful place and really excited to get to share all that with you but yeah this has been such an awesome time i've really enjoyed making all this content and that's what i thought about during this flight so that's why i mention it now you know just thinking like I think everybody can relate, even if it's just two flights on a trip you do, but especially if you do multiple flights, that last one is always the reflecting one. And it really, gets your brain just going about you know all of what you got to do and i absolutely love this last flight of the trip every single time you know it's so much fun to celebrate and reflect on how awesome it was you know some people are obviously by default sad when a trip comes to an end and i can understand that but you know for me i think it's really important to recognize how it all came together all the strategic planning that went into the trip all the amazing memories that came from it all the planes we got to see and obviously from the aviation enthusiast perspective all the fun aviation that got to happen as well. So, so many pieces to the puzzle. It can be viewed many different ways, but I certainly think it's safe to say that these trips really come together well. And this was the uh, first one that was really huge on my channel that took a very long time to complete. We spent over four months encapsulating all the content from this trip, which, you know, I even produced a, on average, I think it was almost three videos a week. It might've been two, but regardless, they came out at a pretty consistent pace over the summer and obviously into the early fall months here in 2024. But obviously it was one of the most anticipated. I didn't want to rush it. And there were so many various videos. I think Vancouver had like five, six, seven, eight videos. Seattle had several as well. So, you know, I really wanted to concentrate and focus on those unique parts of aviation. So once again, you, the viewer can be inspired, excited, you know, in entertained by what there is to offer in aviation. And I'm feeling super fortunate once again, to share all that with you. And that's why I love this channel to be able to provide so much insight to places that maybe not all of us are able to go. And people like Jeb Brooks, you know, he's been super fortunate to go to a place like Antarctica. I probably won't ever be able to go to Antarctica in my life. So I'm just super fortunate for all the content creators out there and that's just what i thought about on this flight you know 
them thinking ahead to being able to share this with all of you and the dedication, hard work and passion that it takes to keep these coming out consistently. You know, there's scripts to write, there's planning to be done, there's research to be had, there's SD cards to be loaded with pictures and you know, all the pieces to the puzzle, there's editing to be had, there's post-production to do. So I just feel super fortunate to be able to share this all with you. And I really hope all of you mutually feel the same about the viewer's perspective and enjoying all these videos and you know, hopefully making an impact on your life as that's always what I try to do with this channel. And I know that's happened for many of you. So thank you so much that have continued to tune into my videos. And I'm so excited for what we have ahead. Again, it's gonna be super fun. Our next trip will be Oshkosh 2023, which will provide great insight to that awesome event and how fun it is. So I'm super excited to share many videos on that. And then we have quite a wide array of fun content coming up, like our first Allegiant assessment on this channel, going to Destin. And then we're also gonna be on the California Zephyr with some really cool flights as well. So. Yeah, this is going to be really fun to share over the coming months, and I hope all of you are excited for it. We'll get in a really, really good groove, and while it won't be rushed, it will certainly be efficient and plenty of opportunity for you, the viewer, to strategically watch it however you would like. So I know that went a little long. I know I kind of really went into detail there, but again, that's what I thought about on this flight, and I do feel like it's important, especially when it's a product that we've seen a handful of times already on this channel to really just, you know, reflect on it in a different way. And that was my main objective here. And let me know in the comments if you mutually have similar feelings like that, where if you're on your last flight of the trip, it just is a complete reflection because that's definitely what it was for me here. And it's just such an awesome feeling to complete this trip and get it all out. It's uh, really fun. And I've certainly had a wonderful time making it and really down the earth moment that that was awesome I, i'm so happy that this happened feeling super fortunate grateful and so much thankfulness and appreciation went into this becoming a reality so many hard work uh, so many hours of hard work at a uh, job and all of what it took to make this possible but man every dime was worth it and i hope all of you enjoyed it and i can't thank each and every one of you enough for watching this and we have just a wonderful sunset to finish it off here so with all that being said let's go ahead and land on only one eight left at dallas or two yikes at tulsa international airport that shows you how fun the trip was and it happens to the best of us that said i hope all of you enjoyed this landing and we'll summarize following that everybody so i really hope each and every one of you enjoyed this trip board definitely a nice variety of content to be established here safe to say that we went from more of an assessment to more of a reflection but i think that's kind of how every trip goes and i hope all of you were able to relate to that in some way shape or form with that being said everybody that'll do for today's video thank you all so much for watching i want to thank each and every one of you for watching my name is Roger of aviation take it easy everybody stay safe just process do what you love and love you do my name is Roger of aviation i want to thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all soon as Roger of aviation is signing off